scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. In the midst of pain, you can find strength. In the midst of stress, you can be renewed. So it is not an endorsement to just be happy about your humanity and to leave it there. The balance to it is that you are divine it is this divine nature that made the patriarchs of old to stand even at the face of death and even though naturally their humanity should sweep them with fear but they did not denounce christ an energy that the men who killed them could not explain where it came from the eagle they stood until death you read about the martyrdom of most of the apostles of the lamb some were turned upside down some were, were hung and killed in transverse sessions and they stood. Can I tell you this? If you realize that you are divine, that even though I am a human, yes, this is the man, Joshua Selman, but there is his divine power that can come upon us. It is with that power we can heal the sick. It is that power that grants us the grace that even though we are humans, we can comprehend truth at a level and a dimension that is not given to ordinary men. The excellency of the power, the workings of his grace in our lives will clearly show that even though we are humans, we are divine. This is why ordinary people can build supernatural things, businesses, ministries this is why although we are humans i can speak to you and say in the name of jesus may the spiritual climate over you change and it will change because i am not alone and i am not all human there is a divine component the bible calls it that treasure that is in earthen vessel so don't move around just saying i'm human and allow sickness to ravage you and allow failure to defeat you and allow the vicissitudes of life to beat you down there is an advantage that we have in this kingdom of light we are royalty kings and priests the lion we are servants serving nation and serving the kingdom with all our hearts we are humans we can go through the things that happen to men there are battles but we will never be defeated because there is the face of the flying eagle. Listen to me. You want to be able to stand before God as an effective witness. You must pass through this school of the spirit where you are taught how to be a lion royalty. You are taught how to be a servant, the calf. You are taught how to maximize your humanity, a man. And then you are taught the reality of your oneness with the Holy Spirit. That culminates to your divinity when you are done with this body of knowledge you are ready to be sent he can send you to the field and you will go and stand on a crusade ground and the first thing people see is your humanity and they look at you and say what is this it never well before people really got to know me the way they know me today um, every time we travel to a region especially if that's my first time Usually there will be an array of protocol, different people waiting to receive Joshua Selman. And so when I arrive, most times I used to wear jeans and a polo, just listening with my earpiece, listening to worship or something. And as soon as we come down from the plane, you see the people looking around, where is he? Sometimes they come and meet my protocol. No, you see the one, they meet a few people. Then when they find out I'm the one, you can see the sheer disappointment on their face. This is what we were waiting for.
for two hours and then i smile back at them let's go to the crusade ground you are only seeing a man but i'm not only a man there is a flying eagle this gives you confidence so people don't bully you because of your humanity royalty service your humanity your divinity all of these dimensions must be captured in your life to present the holistic picture of the christ this is why the four living creatures stand before the throne they reflect who god is that he is royalty he came to serve he came as a man but he is the Christ. Now look at your life and your area of training with the Spirit. You will find out that for many of us, you've only been training, allowing God to train you as lion. You bully everybody, you shout. Someone says, look, I think, um, uh, is it that your leg? Oh, no, 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 don't talk to me like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a lion. And there are people who would never accept any good thing i'm a servant god blesses them they reject it and cast the blessing they need it but they reject it they call their service humility and that may be true but eventually they find out that their humanity catches up with them is that true yes and then for those who are human find out that they are reduced from that realm of royalty and power and they become beggarly because they have allowed the elements the vicissitudes of life they have justified the fact that every failure is permitted in their life after all i am human so he brings you the balance that you are divine you are divine we will rise in your name I don't know you reign on now we will rise in your name I don't know you reign on now hallelujah now please very quickly let's discuss a few things we have to pray so you understand that in the making of believers there are things that you must pass through this is what you learn in the cave of adulam it's not an empty lecture it's a lecture that will move you from face to face this way you will be an effective witness whether in ministry in career whatever it is you can be a billionaire ceo and watch one of your staff crying and you don't look at them and say you don't cry in this corporation no because you were trained as a man you can say come she's surprised my boss that exalted man is now giving me audience because you were trained well you can be a ceo and one day you will come and meet your least staff the security man and say you know what i just came from my office to tell you happy birthday and the man wants to run away i can't believe this my ceo who is busy up there has the thoughtfulness to tell me happy birthday because you were trained and then just when he wants to trivialize you he sees an an entourage of people who come to remind him that that man who was a man is also a lion the lion the calf the man the eagle one more time the lion the calf the man the eagle let's do it for the last time the lion the calf the man so you carry this consciousness go back home and when you see someone who has remained a man for too long you tell him look i have cried with you but it's time to clean your tears the holy spirit did not leave us comfortless don't dwell in your humanity for too long it's time to rise and ascend and become an eagle When you see someone who continues to excuse failure in his life you can literally look at a believer and diagnose what is missing in his life immediately 
when you see someone with pride most likely you know what is missing now good students when you see a man of God bragging on stage and saying all kinds of things you know what to pray for for him now you don't look down on him but you can go back and say Lord I'm seeing only a lion here he has not learned that the purpose of honor and authority is for service when you see someone who is serving as if he will die you are seeing death near him you know what to tell him mr man rest rest when you see someone who is just carnal around speaking as if he's not born again all these faith people faith 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 we are humans a luther continua victoria is carter you say hey you've gone too far in this kingdom we are divine we are in every way supernatural listen to me this is this is this is this is a discipleship class building you to stature and balance so you can teach on faith this week and yet you are attending a burial next week and you don't feel guilty for being there people look at you and say ah, you are in this burial and he said well i was just passing and the holy ghost told no 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 you came for a burial because you are a responsible shepherd over people I have to move to something else now write this down please everybody our corporate mandate our corporate mandate we're dealing with part two now proper you won't believe that everything i'm doing is tying up part one part two we we have a corporate mandate please pay attention we have a corporate mandate there are two people the power of god is coming on right now i just saw light just leaving me no you don't have to stand just two people i just wanted to help them i just saw that light there is there is a season of dealing while i was talking about these four faces some of you you are still in that class that school of the spirit and god just wants to give you a witness this night that he's with you through these seasons of training two people the power of God I just saw come on them they are within this place in the name of Jesus I decree and declare right now please help them by the anointing of the Holy Spirit fear not God is training you fear not God is building you Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says fear not I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine it says when you pass through the waters I will be with you through the rivers it will not consume you and when you walk through fire it will not consume you i bring you a word of comfort by the spirit pass through the school of the spirit there is a making that you are going to in the end of it you will become a witness indeed ordained god will legitimize your operation and you will do much for the kingdom our corporate mandate write this down please now please look up the word gospel means news good news a declaration and for you to understand our corporate mandate as believers you must understand the gospel very quickly there's a separate series on kingdom advance that we'll deal with later on but now just to touch on it we have the gospel is twofold please look up please look up let me your attention the gospel is twofold the first dimension of the gospel affects the hearts of men the second dimension of the gospel affects systems and structures the first dimension of the gospel is a message that saves the second dimension of the gospel is a value system that transforms we must embrace these two sides of the gospel to be able to transform society now i'm teaching you in this section the keys that make for transforming society for nation building can i tell you this this is not just a message for believers it's a message that captures in it the ingredients to change state to transform nations and to transform territories there is the dimension of the gospel as a message that saves the jurisdiction of that dimension of the gospel is the hearts of men the gospel as the message that saves what is it it is the revelation of the father's love listen carefully revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus that means the father commended his love 
towards mankind and creation by sending Jesus Jesus came as an expression of that love the love was targeted primarily to man being the zenith of his creation but then by extension to the entire creation are we together now the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of his son Jesus the object of that love being man and then creation by extension to the intents that if they understand that sacrifice and they believe that report they become recipients of the life of God what the Bible calls eternal life Zoe so here's how the Bible puts it for God so loved the world that he gave his then at that time he was his one and only begotten he's no longer his one and only begotten today he's the firstborn of we the begotten are we together now but at that time he gave his one and only begotten son to the end that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting this is important so that is the dimension of the gospel that saves by believing that message the message of the substitutionary sacrifice of christ his death his burial his resurrection you don't stop there his ascension and his exaltation the gospel of salvation does not stop with resurrection he did not just resurrect and went to the air he got to heaven performed his high priestly duty and he was enthroned and sat at the right hand of god the father that's his current position today so the journey starts with heaven the throne of god he left it and came as a baby passed through the womb of a virgin walked the earth for 30 years performed the ministry for three and a half years he died as an exchange and brought many sons to glory resurrected and is today seated when you believe that report you are a recipient of god's life you are a recipient of god's spirit are we together but for a very long time africa listen to me for a very long time this is the only dimension of the gospel that we have focused in the missionaries when they came in from the west they were sincere people i had the honor and the privilege a few weeks about two weeks ago to be at the first cathedral and the oldest cathedral in this nation i had the honor and the privilege of seeing the instruments that were used by bishop samuel ajayi crowder it was such a time to connect to history i had the honor of seeing his bishop chair that was 150 years old i'm not ignorant as far as church history is concerned by the grace of god i can tell you that the reason why our society is the way it is is because we paid attention to one side of the gospel and we did not bring that balance we paid attention to the message and we ignored the value system the message only affects the hearts of men it is the value system that affects society so we find out that men are saved but the society is not safe we have a corporate mandate a twofold mandate please write it down the first mandate that every true witness has the first mandate that every true witness has is to establish the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men to establish the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men through this spiritual agency that the bible calls the gospel the first corporate mandate of every witness regardless geography is to establish the lordship of jesus christ across the hearts of men and the instrument that we use according to scripture to make that a reality is the preaching of the gospel of salvation how shall they hear except there be a preacher how can the preacher come except he be sent how beautiful are the feet of them that take good news we must be definite about evangelism another name for what you just wrote evangelism is the key to global harvest and by the grace of god for as long as there is breath in us 
we will see that in our lifetime that we bring many to the cross many to jesus they will come to the saving knowledge of jesus as a ceo as a man of god as a medical doctor as a family man you know that regardless the geography of your assignment we're coming there that ultimately your first corporate mandate as a witness as the universal church the ecclesia we have the assignment to ensure that christ is enthroned in the hearts of men this is why we continue to strive day and night to see that the gospel penetrates everywhere this is why people pay millions of naira to see that crusades are held this is why people make tracts this is why people send missionaries to the end that this mandate be achieved and in the name of jesus we will not fail not in our lifetime again i repeat in the name of jesus we will not fail the second corporate mandate that we have corporate mandate means regardless of what you are called to do this is ultimately where your attention should be number two to establish the lordship of jesus christ across every strata of human activities to establish the lordship of jesus christ across every strata of human activities that means to infiltrate systems and structures with the value system of the kingdom listen to me the value system of the kingdom does not profit christians alone there are people who are watching me now there are muslims there are non-christians there are other religions from across the world the gospel that we teach the truths that we communicate are not for christians they are for the entire creation of god are we together so there is the message that saves there is the value system that transforms every society is a reflection of the degree to which it has embraced the value system of the kingdom or otherwise so you can find a territory that has rejected the message but embrace the value system you see it in their technological advancement you see it in a very low crime rate you see that corruption is minimized these are all the value systems of the kingdom you don't have to be a christian to embrace the value system of the gospel it is the strategy that makes a society civil it is a strategy that that when you when you deploy the value system of the kingdom in leadership in governance in nation building you will build a dexterous and transformed society what is the tool that is used to achieve this influence write it down influence is the name given to the key that enthrones Christ within systems and structures. Evangelism is the key that enthrones Christ in the hearts of men. But influence is the strategy that enthrones Christ across systems and structures. Please write that word down and underline it. We're having some time to study. We're going to pray. What is influence? Two definitions very quickly. Please write down. Don't be tired. Don't be tired of writing. You are learning by knowledge shall the just be delivered. Hallelujah. Influence. Write it down, please. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset, the beliefs, and the convictions of a person and a territory. It's called influence. The capacity to have an effect on the mindset the beliefs and the convictions of a person and a territory is called influence second definition let me repeat the first very quickly i'm rushing because there is still an aspect we must touch this night by god's grace influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset the beliefs the convictions of a person and then a territory let me give you the second definition this is my definition of influence influence is the ability to compel men 
to buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty the ability to compel men all and sundry to buy into your convictions without the use of force or cruelty is called influence that means if i make you i sell my belief system by the dexterity of the results that that belief system commands it compels you to buy into my belief system i have influenced you listen to me christ will never be enthroned in our nation in africa across systems and structures if we reject influence for a very long time we have marketed a gospel of spirituality that is good but incomplete we have rejected influence to our peril so the average believer right now is under situations and circumstances territorially speaking read your bible and see the power of influence when the right people are the gatekeepers of systems and structures then christ can be enthroned notice my choice of words the right people not religious people not fanatics in fact not even just christians it takes more than a christian to transform society it takes a witness there are many christians who have assumed positions they use that badge of christian and god there and continue to mess up because they have not embraced the value system of the kingdom we only trust witnesses in this kingdom a witness is one who has passed through this school of the spirit a witness is one who is governed by the fear of the lord conscience and posterity is god speaking to us please look at me i made up my mind as a man of god that by the grace of god i will never raise a people who just know god and love god by the grace of god i believe in influence every influential person is welcome to my life i don't drive them away i don't join this ignorant talk that people say this is how we, we drive people who should we should be there for we have driven politicians we have driven business people away we have driven captains of industry no one to mentor them to help them to correct them we leave them to continue to mess up and we complain the formation is always king priest prophet the captains of industry can go but behind them are priests and prophets that can speak the counsel of God not for the purpose of money until we restore the order of king priest prophet our society cannot be transformed please listen very carefully evangelism and influence therefore are the power keys that are responsible for enthroning christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities what happens when christ is enthroned in a territory number one his value systems are honored the people within that defined territory live by his value system It is a beautiful thing to see the value system of the kingdom honored that way you will see that crime will reduce why because there is an effective management of resources the leaders come there are people who are governed by conscience posterity the fear of the lord let me tell you this regardless of whether you are a christian or not you can embrace the value system of the kingdom a value system that is referenced from scripture and you can defend it as it builds a nation this is not some fanatism about christians no we are advocates of truth we are passionate even about nation building so whilst on one hand we are committed to helping to see that christ is enthroned in the hearts of men we cannot be deaf and dumb and blind over the state of nation when jesus came everywhere the gospel was embraced the territory also grew the territory became a witness that the value system of the kingdom works when jesus walked upon the earth he began to teach what we call the beatitudes he gathered five thousand men regardless of their practice and he began to teach them the modus operandi of the kingdom the value system of the kingdom
it is the value system of the kingdom that will restore honor and dignity and productivity it is the value system of the kingdom that will cause young men to not trivialize the sacrifice of the elderly it is the value system of the kingdom that will teach young people that money is not the only thing needed to respect people the value system of the kingdom are we blessed is the value system of the kingdom that will make a young man to prepare to leave his father's house the moment he finds out he's responsible he must be prepared to get out of that place and go and be responsible not to be 40 50 years in his father's house complaining and stealing money and living there he has not embraced the value system of the kingdom because if you know god well and you understand his system god is a god of portions it is not god's desire that you serve forever as far as family and other things are concerned a time will come your portion will be given to you also is god helping us tonight please look up i presume that most of us here have allowed the gospel as the message that saves there is almost no one here who will necessarily fight the lordship of jesus there are thousands who are following by television thousands who are following online and most of them have come into that point where you believe that jesus is lord i congratulate you evangelism remains our pursuit in life and in death however the gospel as a message that saves works on the heart of men but it does not automatically transform society we need to reintroduce to the body of christ the correct concept of kingdom influence influence imagine with me if michael jackson ever said i love jesus I assure you that one statement would probably win more souls than many crusades put together. Why? Because he has sustained through mastery, through competence, through his results. He has given himself a niche as far as the table of greatness is concerned. And on the strength of that exalted platform, there are many people who can buy into his ideologies. Pray in the spirit in one minute as we delve to the last section. Our lives are changing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please write this down very quickly now we want to discuss the geography and the jurisdiction of witness we have understood that we are witnesses to the degree to which we validate the claims of jesus and we become promoters of his message and his ideology we have also understood the dimensions of the gospel that make for the change of state in a man's heart his reconnection to the lord to the lord who is christ and then the value system that transforms society the jurisdiction write this down please the jurisdiction of your witness is determined by three factors the jurisdiction now we want to talk about the allocation how do i know where i've been called to serve the purposes of god it's called the jurisdiction of your witness you don't just guess where you want to serve the purposes of god there are divine allocations and i want to show you now number one the first way you understand the geography and the jurisdiction of your witness is through your abilities. Write it down, please. Your abilities are a secret code given by God to help you know your place of witness. Your abilities talk of your potentials. They talk of your giftings. Please look up when you see me hold a syringe and a stethoscope what would be your guess about who you think i am so those tools can suggest you can't call me a carpenter with a stethoscope and if you see me with nails wood 
and a hammer what does that suggest so your giftings and your abilities are pointers to the geography of your witness the jurisdiction and the geography of your witness are determined by number one your abilities and that includes your potential and your giftings number two your passion and your pain together your passion and your pain are power keys that help to show you your place of witness wow so your passion is not a waste and your pain is not a waste can i tell you this the most dominant pain in your life is a direction to where you will be a savior also in fact part of the requirement to be a savior is that systems will be created around your life to pass through and connect to the people and with the situations you'll be delivering people from it, you ask those who work for instance in the healing anointing they will tell you there are people who at one point or the other have had to suffer infirmity so when they stand before people there is a memory bank from whence the anointing can come strong from we do not become witnesses in innocence no there is a requisite level of passion and pain pain is a gift if you truly understand it so someone who was raised alone without a father without a mother had to push through understands the pain of growing without mentors had to survive all kinds of temptations when that person sets up an ngo to raise other people and to mentor young people you see the passion you will see at work there did not just come because of a search for money or fame it came because of there is a history that supports and sponsors that passion show us the ancient paths will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus listen do you know many times when you survive your seasons of pain you don't come out with results alone you come out with an anointing to deliver people who pass through the same thing every time you are coming out of seasons in your life don't just jump out 10 years of poverty and hardship and you just came out you didn't just come out there is an anointing if you look well and from that anointing you can begin to release people you are a failure if people come after you and pass through the same thing you pass through where then is the deliverance you have gone through it for them listen to me your passion and your pain are power keys i have been sick myself i know what it means to be afflicted i've been afflicted by demon spirits that's why when i cast out demons and when i minister to the sick there is a passion mixed with pain that becomes the host for the anointing to flow to that person when i stand and i see people oppressed i know what oppression can do and so i come with that fire could it be that through your pain and your passion god has been speaking to you that there are many people who must arise they must drink from that well of your pain and that well of your passion do not waste your passion I am amazed as a man of God you know I pray for people all the time people want to start all kinds of things and sometimes I cannot believe the passion that people have in certain areas that I completely don't have any passion for whatsoever one day someone came and met me and he said he wants to do goat business you know to take goat from the north and take it somewhere and i noticed this guy was not just looking for streams of income it was like he shared dreams he even wrote things and in my mind i said wow this is interesting is it that you just want a stream of income while you wait for a job he said no he truly believes with all his heart that is the will of god i prayed for him with all my heart why because i don't have that kind of passion 
so i had to respect his passion he has to come from heaven for him to have that kind of passion it's true i have seen people with all kinds of passion you come and say my passion is to raise young girls to raise young boys i love people but i'm not sure that i have that unique expression of passion take note of your passion take note of your pain they are pointers to the geography of your witness and then number three divine ordination i'm showing you the three keys that control the allocation of your geography and your jurisdiction as far as being a witness is concerned number one your ability you can know where god has allocated you through your abilities your giftings number two your passion your pain number three divine ordination as we find in jeremiah chapter one you read from verse five down to twelve the young boy jeremiah had an encounter with god and god began to speak to him before i formed thee in the belly he says i knew thee and before thou camest forth from of the womb i sanctified you and ordained you to be a prophet to the nations next verse the little boy said ah lord god but behold i cannot speak i have a deficiency in speech so in this case now he may not have that ability and then he had a disadvantage of age but he says say not i am a child for thou shalt go to all that i shall send thee and whatsoever i command thee thou shalt speak jeremiah so there are times that god can call people i'm saying this because not everyone in ministry and not everyone divinely ordained has that gifting there are times god calls the least qualified people in terms of oratory in terms of intelligence in terms of exposure divine ordination can define your allocation as far as your witness is concerned if you're still with me say amen, amen. now write this down this will be our final session and then we pray micah chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 our jurisdiction of witness we are dealing with the secret now behind societal transformation how do i know my allocation how do i know how to represent the purposes of god this is a concept that is gaining grounds in the body of christ today is called the concept of the seven mountains write it down please the concept of the seven mountains just a little historic background and then we get to discussing it very quickly the in 1975 a man by the name Bill Bright, the founder of the Campus Crusade, alongside Lauren Cunningham, who is the founder of Youth with a Mission YWAM, both of them together developed a strategy, a strategy for bringing godly change to a nation by reaching the seven spheres or what we call mountains of societal influence. So please look up. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1 and 2. Let's read it and I'll explain a few things then we begin to tie this but in the last days the bible says prophet micah is teaching us now it shall come to pass that the mountain now mountain in scripture in many regards is symbolic of spheres of influence are we together now when the bible talks of mountains it talks of spheres of influence the mountain of the lord the house of the lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it verse 2 it says and many nations shall come and say come let us go to the mountain of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path for the lord shall go forth from of zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem the concept of mountains is very important every society please listen every society has spheres of influence systems and structures that shape the mindset the conviction of that society and they are categorized into seven nigeria america uk asia every continent every nation every city every community is built and governed 
by these seven spheres of influence that means if you are able to take the value system of the kingdom to this mind control systems then you will be able to transform society changing a society is not difficult it starts with ensuring that there are witnesses across the strata of human activities representing the purposes of god if you're with me say amen, amen. there are seven of them let's list them very quickly number one is called the mountain of religion religion as a sphere of influence religion as an institution this is the first mountain where the purposes of christ needs to be represented please look up what is the assignment of the mountain of religion they are the communicators and the preservers of faith morality spiritual convictions they shape the spiritual convictions of society so if god is calling you to be a man of god apostle prophet evangelist teacher pastor that is the mountain you are sent to you are assigned to preserve the purposes of god within that sphere can i tell you this africa is a very religious continent on average every week like today there are millions of people across the world who are seated in different churches cathedrals and they submit themselves under the mentorship of spiritual leaders many have been doing this for decades and they would do it for the rest of their life an average of every day has a religious or a christian program happening in this nation that means a society is among other factors a reflection of the quality of its spiritual leaders with respect to the truths and the doctrines that are communicated you can random pick people across the market square the road everywhere and examine their spiritual convictions as a report card to the efficiency of what the witnesses on that mountain are doing or otherwise so if god is calling you into ministry He's not just calling you to have protocol, to wear a suit, to wear a tie, to be a leader over people, to have churches and branches. The assignment is bigger than that. The mountain of religion. This is where spiritual error comes from. This is where confusion comes from. This is where idol worship comes from. Any wrong spiritual communication. If I teach you lies and I teach you rubbish because you love me and you believe I know what I'm doing, you will receive what I'm teaching you hook, line, and sinker. It will become a mind control system. Many of you here are captains of industry. By tomorrow, you will take that wrong ideology that my misguided or incomplete gospel has given you. And now you are a leader over 4,000 people. Those people will have to submit to that ideology men of god have a very serious responsibility every individual you are talking to represents families corporations government there are politicians here at the highest level by the grace of god they single-handedly have access and influence to millions of people within their regions that means one person who gets a correct spiritual conviction by reason of a proper mentorship of a sound man of God you have saved millions of people you have saved regions the mountain of religion number two very quickly the second mountain that needs to be captured to preserve the purposes of God and to transform society is the mountain of family every arm robber comes from a home everyone disturbing society comes from a home every champion who is affecting society positively comes from a home family is the bedrock of every society it's often said that charity begins at home it is not only charity that begins at home anything begins at home good or bad discipline begins at home productivity begins at home responsibility begins at home family life is very important there is a reason why god designed family life the way it is so the father has his role to play as far as raising a child is concerned the bible says train up a child in the way he should go not the way you want him to go your first assignment as a parent is to find out the blueprint of that child's destiny 
then to raise that child consistent with the blueprint you have been given train up a child in the way he should go i submit to you with every sense of responsibility and respect that most of the people that evolve into failures in society their failures started from lack of proper mentorship that should have come from father and mother they were allowed to freelance their ideas about life and they began to handpick ideas from all kinds of references the average family today depends on school to do their work you ask most children where they get their convictions from my teacher said my teacher said not daddy said if you're fortunate to take your child to a good school then it's safe for you if not so then there is trouble waiting for you we must restore the order of family let the child start learning how to pray from home let the child start learning how to give from home not by the father giving instruction train means lead the way you know how a train moves a train moves in coaches so when the bible says train up a child it means do it let him see not just tell him to do it children are not good listeners but they are good imitators are we blessed yes when the father demonstrates priesthood i'm glad today is father's day your children are sleeping and you get up as the priest in the family let your children know you serving the lord let your children let me tell you what will happen while you are walking around the house laying hands and praying one day your little son will follow you he will cry and say daddy i want to follow you you will say go and sleep he will refuse one day when you travel he will go and kneel down where he has seen you kneeling down he will be trying to pray in tongues blah, 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 blah. he doesn't know what he's doing but you are training the child can i tell you this we can transform society when we begin to bring the value system of the kingdom in family by the time the children are watching daddy and mommy fighting insulting themselves tearing themselves by the time the children witness irresponsibility from the father always flogging them back home as a result of school fees and yet they see the father celebrating ceremonies every two two months with an amount that is ten times the school fees there is a subliminal message you are giving that child once he becomes a teenager he embraces rebellion with joy he keeps that vendetta and waits until he is empowered then he will come back with a revenge mission may god help christian families to be true representations of not just godliness but responsibility and productivity otherwise let me tell you this one generation of neglect is all we need and we'll recycle ourselves back to to societal decadence i'm sorry to say it and i don't mean to insult you but have you checked the last time have you checked our children and our little ones and have you seen the level of disdain they have towards the things of god growing up if visitors come to your house and you don't greet they won't flog you but you can know what will happen later on not by prophecy there are there are coded looks languages that already inform you of what is waiting by non-compliance i'm not talking of being abusive uh -uh. if they gave you money you will thank the person and hand it over immediately but right now they are giving you money and it's your child who is collecting it and bullying everyone we didn't interrupt the conversation of elders growing up no if elders come you go and sit down you greet them and sit quietly now you can be discussing serious things and a child will come and play and be slapping you and the parents are laughing discipline is part of love we must restore discipline and hear me please hear me please if for any reason you did not have an opportunity to be properly mentored and you are grown is still not too late there is the holy ghost there are pastors your assignment is to listen are we together yes sir listen family it's important we must learn 
your children should have the first revelation of Jesus not from a pastor from their parents the prayer the fasting the times of teaching and mentorship the Lord is restoring family in Jesus name Amen. mountain number three very quickly is the mountain of education I'll touch on them very briefly because we have to pray the mountain of education this is very important the intellectual transformation of a society and a people Christians inclusive depend on the quality and the health of this mountain it was an embarrassing thing to know that people do malpractice but right now is something that even sells someone can pass through an entire system from secondary school down till university till masters and not be able to defend anything because someone was paid to write for him i'm not being sarcastic i know that times are hard and so on and so forth but i'm telling you something is wrong we must be able to guide the kinds of teachers this is why god must give us grace to have solid christian schools that in addition to secular education must inculcate programs even if not nationally approved let it be approved by heaven to train the children whilst they learn those things inculcate courses spiritual growth honesty morality and conscience teach the people things teach the students how to greet how to respect how to be serious how to save most people never learn about money till they become adults by that time it's too late it's the reason why when most people are not employed they are, they are in a state of, of, of penury if they are taught up the economic system of the kingdom from infancy by the time they become adults it will not be difficult to be self-sufficient at least whilst they wait for those bigger doors to come school is very important who teaches your child is important because in most cases that person has more time with that child than even you the parent imagine a school where you pray and call upon the name of the lord where the teachers are born again and sound and teaching not just for salary they know that in addition to salary they are witnesses are we together yes can i tell you this most of the scriptures that i know today it came from secondary school i'm telling you sincerely we were we had scriptures for every month no matter who you are you take sweets and you throw it on the ground you do it once twice three times they will call your parents may god grant us grace as a ministry to build a school that reflects this kind of ideologies in the name of jesus there are some of you here who are directors of schools go back and check your course content not just from a secular standpoint is kingdom come represented in the training process of the children edit your teachers don't let teachers dress anyhow and come and speak anyhow explicit languages making dirty calls in the presence of the students they are learning there must be a code a modus operandi if they are not interested they can leave your school and go somewhere else but for as long as they are under your covering it doesn't matter whether it's a christian teacher a muslim whatever it is they must be able to inculcate values that are consistent with kingdom come this is why i'm sorry to say this but this is why the failure rate you see the intellectual degradation that is happening among our children They receive the best of education and they write simple exams and you see results that bring pain to the parents. There are still teachers that are trying to make up their papers. I'm not insulting them, but I'm saying they, they ought not to be teaching. Education. In most nations right now, when you are done from Nigeria here 
and you go to their nations to further they subject you through a system that stabilizes you first they are not sure of what you have done say thank you for what you have done but right now you are not just going to start msc or phd directly we will have to submit you through some to acclimatize your understanding and most of the students are shocked at the level of ignorance even though they are graduates there are many graduates today who cannot defend their certificate honestly and intelligently they cannot write an intelligent letter they cannot write you know it's, something is wrong a graduate is writing a letter and abbreviating a lot of things like he's sending an sms we have to trust god to work on the educational system in the name of jesus next the mountain of politics and governance the mountain of politics and governance i may not say so much here but i hope you know that it's important to find christ represented in our parliament and i'm glad that we have a lot of parliamentarians here we have people here in the senate the national assembly honor to have you all around presidency thank you so much it is an honor and a privilege to be able to share the truth of god's word because we must pray for these people and we must see to it that they stand not as advocates of religion no inculcating the value system of the kingdom in governance equity moral excellence productivity development at a territorial level this country is wealthy and blessed with both human and material resources we should not be crying this lamentation should not be not for nigeria we are a blessed nation africa is a blessed continent it is largely a leadership problem and so we must trust god to raise men and women in government you know anyone who is a politician don't go around clamoring around them and looking for them as though they owe you money politicians are not in office to give you money they are in office to serve many times we insult politicians but i need to speak a bit for them too the pressure that comes from lots of people who believe they are stakeholders in that office is what compels them to many times delve into dishonesty because we men of god have our courts that we want other people have things that they want these tribes people have this this one has this and before you know it the money allocated for development has to be sliced into different pieces to appease people we must pray for the leaders and allow them to do the needful because we'll all be benefactors of it you see like me say amen, amen. politics and governance i trust god for a time when our national assembly the, the 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 state houses will be full of men and women who call upon the name of the lord not from a fanatical standpoint but a standpoint of spiritual orientation with the value system of the kingdom like daniel one man represented in government brought glory to the name of the lord through the dispensation of three kings let me tell you this if you are a politician and you are committed sincerely to bring in the value system of the kingdom that culminates to development you deserve prayer and support i'm not partisan i don't play politics but then you cannot separate the apostolic ministry from territorial and societal development we are intertwined we are sent to all and sundry People who have no agenda should not be voted into office. No, they should not. From a councillor level to a local government level, it's not just the issue of Godfatherism and politics. We must be honest and be guided by number one, the fear of the Lord. Number two, conscience. Number three, a sense of posterity. In truth, if Christ tarries, sooner or later, all of us will pass and give way for another generation. When Kofi Annan was UN Secretary General, he made a statement on Children's Day. He said, let the children not suffer the consequences of their parents' carelessness. We must think about the future beyond our current comfort and bring forth new indices that measure success. Not just an entourage of people, not just money and houses, posterity. This is what must govern our leadership philosophy there is need for a thorough reorientation of our political system 
and governance i know that there is a remnant of people who are passionately committed to building this nation but we must pray that they continue to grow into a force that is enough to be able to make kingdom come and to transform this nation the anthem of nigeria says the labor of our heroes past shall not be in vain it takes selfishness and insensitivity to make it in vain may god help our politicians may god help our members of parliament from the presidency down to the local government in the name of jesus christ number five media very quickly media media is the fifth mind control system this is quite a unique one because now the era of technology and social media makes it a double-edged sword it can promote the kingdom in an instant and it can bring reproach to the kingdom in an instant the media is very important it is true that whoever controls the media controls the convictions of people there are many types of government now the media is also a government The happenings around the world have taught us very painfully that the media have more power than we think we have underestimated the power of the media we must trust god that god will raise men and women who will capture the media for his glory in the name of jesus christ number six the arts and entertainment this is the sixth mountain that must be captured for the kingdom the arts and entertainment M musicians filmmakers sports people and all kinds of people this is the mountain that attempts to mentor society on how to be successful and how to celebrate success we learn how to celebrate success from this mountain and it matters who is teaching you the decadence in society today came from the propositions that came from this mountain indiscipline lack of responsibility have come from this mountain because the people in this mountain are people with exceptional results that's the condition to be there whether it is footballers movie makers musicians and all sorts of people you have to this is where celebrities live we must trust god to raise people from this mountain that's why we continue to work on our people to be competent competent to be able to present the christ the mountain of arts and entertainment it is amazing the kind of influence that this mountain yields we need men and women who love jesus passionately and can excel and while the whole world is lending you their attention you can direct them to jesus even as a celebrity unashamedly you tell them jesus is my lord i love him you tell them my excellence can be traced from the value system and the philosophy that is referenced from scripture if you celebrate my excellence then you have to celebrate the reference from whence it came it is scripture and there are many of you here who god is sending to this mountain if you are sent to this mountain your first assignment is to be extremely successful that's what gives you the leverage to get there but when you are there you will look at all and sundry and let them know that jesus remains lord while they clap for you you direct their uploads to jesus from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you the last mountain and then we pray the mountain of business and finance this is a very serious mountain because this is the mountain that funds every other mountain can i tell you this our civilization is economically driven whoever controls the economy controls the decisions controls the leadership there is no point shine away 
the bible says the rich rule over the poor very dangerous statement you would not expect to be found in the bible the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender please listen to me i want you to fight poverty with everything god gave you not from a standpoint of flesh i want to prosper so i have a car so i have a house kingdom come cultures your interest to be more than that it is mundanity to just seek for things but when kingdom come is in view you must trust god for as long as believers remain poor deprived subjugated there is not much that can be done for the kingdom and when i talk of wealth and prosperity i'm not just talking of meeting your needs you are not wealthy when you just meet your needs it doesn't take so much to be able to meet your needs we are talking of people who stand as prophetic pillars to see to it that the cause of the kingdom is advanced single individuals who are as blessed as nations i tell you in this end time there are people that god is raising take it from me there are there are there are financial apostles that god will sh will shoot like arrows men and women who will command levels of wealth i have seen this many times in my visions but the wealth is not in them <clears throat> has not possessed them these were men who prosper these are men who prosper even as their souls prosper their humility their character their saneness is still intact and yet they are custodians of billions they can advance the gospel with their resources they can save a nation in one day there are people god is raising i assure you it's, it's a financial renaissance that god is bringing people who understand the purpose of money more than just buying a car more than just buying estates more than just flashing designers there is an agenda can i tell you this the name of jesus is heavy it takes resources to lift it up next time you say be lifted high think of what you are saying there are many people who have written books today that god told them the books should go around the earth and save people but they are limited because of resources to be poor and broke is evil let me tell you this the problem i have with poverty is not that it is bad is the effect it has in the gospel think how terrible it will be that whilst a service is going on like this the nations are following tv stations are having this playing right now you know all the people following from different nations and then the gen goes off why fuel finished how does that sound to you i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever lord it's my commitment i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever about to pray listen what you call purpose or your assignment is simply the role that you have to play as far as these mountains are concerned religion family education politics and governance media arts and entertainment finance when he sends us as witnesses 
we must receive the marching orders and stand everyone to his station so while the business people are supplying resources the men of god are there preaching doctrine and truth the media people are promoting the counsel of christ the celebrities are mentoring a generation through their results the family people are raising the next generation and preserving a heritage of godliness it is only at that point we can say thy kingdom come and thy will be done can i tell you this this is what we are called to do more than church more than conferences there must be believers who are saved but matured enough to station themselves therefore like the national anthem of nigeria let me speak to believers arise oh compatriots there is the call of that captain our captain is calling many of us have been wallowing away and he's telling you where are the billions that should come from your effective witness oh businessman i sent you to real estate not only to build houses and show you are the youngest millionaire i sent you because there is an agenda you're a man of god i gave you access to twenty thousand people not just to build an empire you mentor them oh media person i gave you a tv station i made you a celebrity what have you done for the kingdom I gave you a passion to earn a PhD, to become a professor, to be a vice chancellor, to be the leader of an international institute. Not just so that you will employ your tribesmen there, but so that the value system of the kingdom will be left. That long after you are gone, Christ will be enthroned because you brought an order that is consistent to scripture. Can I tell you this? Jesus is returning for a church that is victorious. We are not weak people just going around doing some service singing praises praying and going back home this is our assignment as witnesses please rise up on your feet two prayer points tonight prayer point number one i obtain grace to be faithful oh god as far as my witness is concerned i will spend my life revealing jesus bringing glory to him lift your voice and pledge that allegiance inside and outside we will ensure that jesus christ is enthroned we will ensure that jesus christ is lifted in every strata of human activities evangelism and the influence representing the purposes of god across every strata please pray i obtain grace send me your god send me your god as a man of god build me make me train me and send me to represent your purposes as an apostle a prophet an evangelist a pastor let me take on that mountain preserve the heritage of godliness raise me as a kingdom entrepreneur raise me as a politician in governance raise me as a businessman raise me as one who you will trust with children who will raise them in the fear and the nurture of the Christ hallelujah last prayer point for tonight you are going to pray father every engracing every equipping every mantle every anointing it takes for me to represent you properly as far as the geography of my witness is concerned i obtain grace from heaven lift your voice and pray if you are mary obtain grace to give birth to jesus if you are naomi obtain grace to mentor ruth if you are samson obtain grace to be a judge on behalf of god's people if you are daniel obtain grace to reign in politics if you are joseph obtain grace to preserve israel from famine 
If you are Moses, obtain grace and the staying power to move God's people from Egypt to the promised land. If you are John the Baptist, stand and serve sincerely. Advocate the coming of the Christ. If you are Anna the prophetess, stay in the place of intercession and pray down salvation. If you are Joseph of Arimathea, acquire the graves, acquire the estates, so that the master will have a place to lie and so that resurrection can happen. If you are Esther, use your beauty, use your intelligence to rise to the throne and there preserve the purposes of God. If you are Mordecai, be a watchman at the gate. Stand in truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, listen to me. When I learned this, my life had a definition immediately. There is a reason why you will go to bed, there is a reason why you will wake up in the morning. There will be no more shadow boxing, empty gistings, because this assignment you see is time targeted. From the day you are born, there is a countdown. You don't have all the time. If you get born again at 30, time is already against you. I made up my mind that as far as it depends on me, I will bring joy to the heart of the master. Many have gone ahead of us. Some ran this race with excellence. Some did not run with excellence. Their lessons are all together for us to learn. The Bible says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. CEO, now you know that the favor upon your life is not just because you are intelligent there is an assignment tied to it politician is not only because god granted you grace to win elections there is an assignment tied to it there will truly be a revival in africa there will be a renaissance not just on crusade grounds alone i believe that in our lifetime we will see africa rise as that continent that will present jesus to other nations In the name of Jesus Christ witnesses there was a man sent from God his name was you the same came for a witness that through his witness all might believe he says it is because of this that I have said that you shall receive power there are people here you may not have the opportunity to go to the house of assembly but remember you are mary your assignment is in your womb make sure you give birth to jesus well take care of jesus for us because he is a savior if you are elizabeth realize that your womb is carrying a prophet don't let john the baptist fail if you are hannah don't just mourn your barrenness realize samuel is coming rather than focusing on the barrenness be prepared to raise samuel because he is the prophet who will ordain saul he is the prophet who will ordain david for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Through my life, oh God. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One more time. For thine is the 
back home this week and get a notebook begin to work on this series write down certain things get certain things clear about your destiny and open fire towards destiny no going back burn the bridge behind you my generation must see me serve the purposes of God that at the end of your life it will not just be that you came grew married had children made some money and died that's not a good graph for your life that kingdom comes through my life that's why we sang this anthem i'm going to make an altar call right now two minutes please our time is gone you are here and you are saying apostle i need jesus fast no coercion wherever you are just run and come out and come and stand in front of me right now i mean run like there's fire on the mountain there's no need to preach any other message for you while we sing this song i'd like you to come and stand here all the overflows you can come and stand in front of your overflow run to jesus he's giving you a new beginning right now run to jesus run to jesus koinonia celebrate them as they come don't sit back there it's time to make a decision for him for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. This is one of the reasons why we save sinners this is one of the reasons why we ask people to come to Jesus it's not to just increase the membership of a church It's so that the body of Christ you don't have to kneel my dear people lift your right hand whether you're on the floor or you are standing I know some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears lend me a few minutes believers say after me Lord Jesus those of you in front here, all the overflows you're following from any nation, I'd like you to make that commitment, mean it from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. The Bible says, ye must be born again. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word that you desire that I be saved and to be a witness. I have come just as I am. I declare that Jesus is my Savior, is my Lord, and is my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, and the grave is broken from my life. From today, I am a recipient of eternal life. I am a child of God. I grow in grace, and I go forward ever and backward never in jesus name keep the hands lifted father thank you for these ones you have brought them by your spirit some of them are crying in genuine repentance let tonight be the beginning of a new season in the name of jesus christ i pray that the power that saves the gospel being the power of god unto salvation may the power that saves walk in your life in the name of jesus hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you